On today's episode of Titus and Tate, it was a wild night of college basketball, Tate. Wow. A and lot of chants about Chris Beard. The the word of the night was hate. <laughs> a lot of hatred going around the Texas Tech fans. I've never seen people celebrate hatred so much. Oh, my God. It's good. to. The, the, it was it was a great night for the haters. Yeah. Put it oh, that way. Huge for Oof. the haters. Uh, yes. Obviously, the big story is uh, Chris Beard back in Lubbock. Uh, the Texas Tech fans hate this man. They Hate made, him. They made it very clear. Uh, not only tonight, last night when Texas showed up, they they they've made it clear for a very long time. A lot of birds are out in the air. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there was Auburn Bama, which looked to be interesting there for a half second, and then Walker hey, Kessler said, "No, thank you." Uh, <laughs> a lot of hatred in that game. Louisville versus the referees. Yes. The, uh, Carolina Louisville game. A lot ice, of hatred in that game as ice well. Ice thrown on the floor. Uh, <laughs> yeah, of all things, honestly, ice is pretty respectable to throw on the floor. That's no, okay. It ma- yeah, 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 just yeah. wipe it up. <laughs> It's good for the towel, guys. Uh, Amani Bates hates college basketball. Uh, there's also that we have to talk about. Iowa State hates offense. Uh, a lot of hatred going around. Mm. That is the word of the day. Shout out Jayden to the Ivey haters. hates Mike Conley, obviously. Don't. I, I'm sorry. I had to say that one. I had to say that hates one. Hates me. It's yeah, it Maybe. I don't know who it is. And you know what, Jaden? Someone at Ohio. You know what? I hate you back. <laughs> You're, you're, you're is he the rigid. new Marcus Carr? He's the new Marcus Carr. Wow. I, I hate Jaden Ivey. Uh, th- this was this was quite a week for the haters, especially mm. tonight. Uh, we are going to talk about all that, but first. Woody Durham. All right, let's start with uh, Chris Beard. I think right. That's that's the the story of the night with respect yes. to uh, with respect to to, to uh, uh, Jim's beloved St. John's Johnnies choking away what little hope they had left and making an NCAA tournament. We were watching that alongside Bam Auburn. We we thought they had a chance for a second. Yeah, it Posh looked, it Alexander good. did all he could. Yeah, Posh, Posh played well, but uh, you know, I I I, I think it's not going to happen, Tate. That's all. Yeah. I, that's all I kept saying when we called that game. When we called the St. John's game, I just kept saying. I remember saying over and over. This team has to make the tournament. Yes. We have to get them there. Yes. How are we going to get it done? I think and you told Jim at least three times that it was over. Yeah. Uh, the season was over. So Jim was being a good I think sport. tonight it's officially over. I think St. John's is officially. <laughs> or are they? I don't know. It's not I don't over. Know. It's I don't not know. Are they over? They no, can win the Big East over. tournament, dude. Georgetown did it last year. Also, Big East might be the best conference in basketball if you stack all things together. You that's know, true. So, that's true. Big East or SEC. Uh, the story, though, was was Chris Beard back in Lubbock, Texas. Uh, the game went about how you might expect. Um, I think going into this game, that the Texas Tech had to win. This felt like the the uh, what, what we kept saying when when IU played Purdue and then IU wins, and mm-hmm. then we kept saying over and over they had to win this game. Of course, they won the game, but um, it, it's hard to like. It, we understand that that's irrational to say it like that, but like it just it makes sense in our brains. Yeah, like you had to win the game. Like Texas Tech had to win the game. We knew they're going to win the game. It's one of those every so often a situation presents itself where the team that wants it more really does actually that actually does matter, especially playing at home. Yeah, but you know how like the that that's like the that's, that's a cliche. They they just wanted it more tonight. And you're like, well, that doesn't yes. help you make shots. I heard Chris Batola say that at least five yeah. times that Texas Tech has more want to than, yeah. than Texas. But though. every so often a scenario presents itself where wanting it more actually does matter. This was one of those scenarios. Uh so I, I we I kind of knew Texas Tech was gonna win no matter what the hell happened. Mostly, I knew the refs were gonna be on Texas Tech's side because we talked about that. That, that why would you not be? <laughs> In love to make out of love it. Yeah. We knew they were gonna win. But ultimately, I think the 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 point that we need to make about why we knew this game was gonna be a Texas Tech W Tate is that Texas Tech is a better basketball team than Texas. Yes. It's it's not simple. It might be a better basketball program. It might than Texas. Uh so the the game itself, who cares? It 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 what what happened had like Whatever the algorithm said were going to happen is what happened. It's really not that particularly interesting. It was so inevitable they, that Chris Beard promised before this game that he was going to shave his head if Texas, Texas won. won. This game. Yeah, which says to me he did not think he that knew Texas what, was going to win this game. He knew what to expect. So yes. let's let's not. If, if you came here for X's and O's, first of all, you come you come to the wrong you, podcast. Wrong for, show. Yes, for, for many reasons, but specifically <laughs> as it pertains to this, because what I really horns. want to run horns. <laughs> what I really want to talk about is the hatred that went into this this was the wildest february it's technically february by the way yeah happy, happy february rabbit rabbit uh this is the wildest february atmosphere i think i've ever seen in college basketball the wildest regular season atmosphere mm. i think i've ever seen in college basketball wow the, the- cameron crazies <laughs> you heard that they hear, on the hot I, seat. Honestly. Cameron Crazy is on the hot seat. No, this, 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 this was number one. That, and I wasn't there obviously we're, we we were in los angeles we watched this on television but, but through the television this felt like just the it felt like the Thunderdome. It felt like 
uh, a, a situation that, frankly, if I was a player on Texas, I would want to credit to those guys that they actually like showed up and kept playing. Marcus Carr uh, actually had a decent game. He had a good and, game, yeah. Um, credit to those guys. Because if I'm on Texas, I'm just like, I, I uh, Like, this isn't my battle. <laughs> Coach, you're on your own on this yeah, one. Yeah, I didn't come. Oh, I don't want this. Uh, <laughs> the, the hatred, I, I was trying to think of what, what, uh, what experience I like what I have been in the arena for the hatred experiences that I have been in an arena for. And the only thing that I can remember that was anywhere close to this, and it was not this, this is by far Mm -hmm. the number one. I wasn't even there and I could feel it through the two. Uh, When Sean May came back to Bloomington, I was at that game when the Carolina played Indiana in the uh, big 10 ACC challenge. Sean May, Scott May's son who played at Bloomington North high school with Jared Jeffries and played literally is from Bloomington, literally from Bloomington. Chose to go to North Carolina, and then they had to come back and play at IU. And I've never. And then the whole time that Sean May was winning the title for North Carolina, they were just cutting back to yeah, Scott May, to, his yes, dad, at in yes, Indiana. Yes. So I felt bad for Indiana. I've fans. never, I've never heard Indiana fan. I've never heard a place boo as much as that. That, that's what this reminded me. Do you, do you have one that comes to mind, like do, an experience that you remember that, like, you're like, oh my god, I, there's hatred, and then there's whatever the hell's happening. I was gonna say, I mean, Carolina Duke. I mean, JJ Redick. I mean, obviously there was like. At, at that time in the world, I mean, the hatred that I had for Lee Melchioni and J.J. Redick and the things that we would chant, you know, yeah. acne a-hole, yeah. you know what I mean? Things like this. They were just like J.J. Redick at, uh, at Maryland. Yeah, I mean, that, J.J. That's... Redick in Chapel Hill. Grievous Vasquez, I remember, came back to Chapel Hill and, uh, and the things that were said. But there was like a level of, like, respect that yeah. was underneath the hate, you know? Yeah. And this did not feel like that. There was this, no respect. This, this felt zero like respect. zero respect and full <laughs> hatred. And, in fact, it felt like something bad could really happen. And when you're in Lubbock, Texas, I mean, this is a bunch of cowboys. I mean, guys are buying drinks. They got to take their pistol out to, to get their wallet <laughs> out. You know what I mean? That's, that's I the think fan base. What I learned tonight, uh, I, I learned a handful of things tonight. Among them is that this is not a game to these people. No. These Texas Tech fans. This is not Texas like Tech is here to stay, also, I think. As you said, this isn't this isn't a scenario that God God, I hope we don't get this on Saturday when when Coach K is coaching in the Dean Dome for the final time, that mm. uh he's not gonna get a standing ovation. Again. He's gonna get applauded. Is he so. gonna get gifts? Is he gonna get like uh, I hope not. Whatever. If, anything, the fact that if anything, they should show the Gerald Henderson elbow and then his post game press conference afterwards, where he was like, "It was unintentional." Yes. But then they yeah. do it in slow mo with Gerald Henderson, like looking and staring down. Uh, th- this this is not that. This is the, I I I I knew that Texas Tech hated Chris Beard. I knew that this was going to be a wild atmosphere. I knew they were going to boo the man a lot. As you said, I thought there might be a skosh, just a just a, a yeah, tiny like skosh a of like, like we still love you, we a little still bit. love you. I thought there'd be like one shot of like like some pl- players or fans like interacting with Beard in like a good way that, yeah. that like he was, you know. I I thought I was I was telling you this uh, last night. There was all the uh, uh, the the stuff on Twitter. I know Goodman's there at the at, at, at Lubbock, and he's just firing off tweets of videos of that's what he does best. Goodman just hides in the bushes and takes pictures and videos of people and tweets them. Um, he he was doing that with some of the the Texas Tech fans, and 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 the the hype of the 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 aura of this game was like starting to build. Of like, oh my God, there's there's just these students going to the Texas bus and flipping it off and and chanting and and all that stuff. They've been camping out forever. Um, and the one thing that I I pointed out to you when we got here tonight that was interesting to me was that if you if you're on social media and you're looking at this stuff, all the Texas Tech fans that seem to be replying, there doesn't there's not a whole lot of like ah you know like I I'm I'm all for good fashion good old fashioned rivalry but this is a bridge too far like I don't I wish the kids would clean it up a little no, no, not a single bit of that it's just like good good I hate that guy too yeah please, please flip him off for me and and Chris Beard said before this game and they were asking him did he expect the hate and he said yes and i think that's that really is the underlying conversation here because texas tech people and people that go to that school and that live in lubbock they hate ut you know they hate the school they hate everything about it to them you know that that is like the enemy to them so the fact that he left texas tech and went to texas he knew what he was getting into that's why all those Texas Tech fans are like, I have no sympathy for him. Yes. He was here. Yeah. We played Texas when they were ranked. He knows what this is he about from deal. this side. Yes. And he knew when he agreed to go there what he was walking into. So, therefore, they have no sympathy I, for him, which I understand that, yes. too, because it's not like he went into it ignorantly. He knew what he was walking into. I have into. zero sympathy for yeah. Beard, by the way. And I'm not a Texas Tech fan, but for exactly what you said. Because I, I, th- th- there did seem to be a slight attempt by some to whitewash, or I don't know if that's the right word, to... uh to downplay, to to like 
to be the to be the what it, the the are we sure person that's yeah. like what uh, let me let, let me just devil's advocate here why why exactly do we hate chris beard shouldn't Texas are we Texas sure fans, we hate chris yeah shouldn't yeah. we like <laughs> celebrate what he did for this program and all yeah. that and as you said it's not that uh you know it, it it's not that he he threw up double middle fingers to tech on the way out it, like everything he kind of did was sort of by the book i know he put out like a statement once he, he took the texas job that was like four days after the fact he put some graphic together and tweet whatever you know he it was it was more than tom brady did for the patriots fans so at least there's <laughs> at least there's that um the he, poor he, Patriots. <laughs> fans. I mean, what what are they gonna do what are they gonna do uh, but as you said, it doesn't it doesn't matter what he did. There there was no salvaging this. The one place he could not go, if you're the head coach of Texas Tech, the one place you cannot leave to go to is the University of Texas. He did that. The moment he did that, it's over. It's you you're hated. You'll be hated forever. During the broadcast, I, I don't know who who was calling the game with Spatola, but he even brought that up. He's like, I'm 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 curious to see uh what the fans will feel about Chris Beard here in 10 years, 15 years, whatever, you know, enough time passes and, and people move. Time on. won't help this. They're going to hate the man. I'll yeah. tell you what they'll feel. They'll hate the man forever. He left their program to go to the rival. That's, that's a Cardinal sin. That's like never, I, to my knowledge, it's never happened in, in big time college basketball that, that you leave to go to the, the number one hated rival. And I understand that Texas tech might not be Texas's number one rival, but Texas is Texas tech's number one rival. Um, it, it's, it's, it's unprecedented. So no, I have no sympathy for him, but, uh, the, the, I at the same time I I did not like I I I wouldn't say I felt bad for him but I I, I put myself in Christmas. This would be going into that arena. And I was like, oh my god. But it, this would be oh like if god. Rick Pitino was at Kentucky in 1997 and went to Louisville. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And I know like he's yes. the only coach that's really kind of waded in these uh, waters of like I've been to this school and I go to this school in. Sean state. Miller's going to do it when he takes over to Arizona State, but yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. That could happen. There, but. but like the in-state rivalry there, it's like a different thing. So Chris Beard is kind of in a rare spot. Like you said, no one's ever been here before. So there's nothing that you can really look to and say like, how am I supposed, supposed to, to handle this? Yeah. And the, the other thing I, and I think he did a good job. I think he wanted some more sympathy, but I think at the same time, we, the, he was not allowed to have it because he he went knowingly into it, yes. as we've said. Yes, so. and also I think I think there's this idea that Chris Beard built this program from nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Which like I Bobby Knight coached here. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, think about they went that. to the Sweet Sixteen. They were yeah. ranked like more often than not when Knight was there. Was there? Which isn't to say, like I I get Chris Beard took it to insane levels. He he deserves. Had he not gone to Texas, it, honestly, he could have gone to Duke. He could have gone to like Kentucky. Like yeah. insert insert program that most people hate here. He could have gone there to have been the new head coach, and Texas Tech would have built a statue for him, would have welcomed him back, probably yeah. gets a standing ovation when he comes back. He did not do that. He went to Texas, uh, and and he deserves whatever, you know, you got to live with the consequences. And it's his alma mater, so we understand why he yeah. wants to go to Texas. Yeah. I get why Chris Beard is out. like, I'm going to go to Texas, but it goes back where I think when he took the Texas Tech job, the idea of him ever getting the Texas job was so far-fetched in his yeah. mind that he was willing to take the Texas do you, Tech job. Do you think because the the hatred does seem to go, would, would, I'm, I'm curious if the hatred will, will continue to go, well, I guess Texas is going to the SEC, so I guess we're not going to have time to like really Texas build a hates Oklahoma. But uh, do, do you think that um, because the hatred seems to only go one way from Texas Tech to Texas, do you think that he underestimated just how much people, like when he took the Texas Tech job, as you said, did, do you think he realized that by taking the Texas Tech job, you basically have eliminated yourself from the Texas front. He he obviously hadn't. He he took it, but like that 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 would be a huge deal if you were like once you take the Texas Tech job, anyone that that values your safety in Lubbock would would then not be able to go take the Texas job. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't I don't think he really like thought that through. I don't think he really understood. I think how that much when he took hate. the Texas Tech job, he probably was working under the idea that I would never get offered the Texas. Oh, you job. just thought it was like off the. Like, I, yeah, I think yeah, that yeah. he was like yeah. that. That's where he was in his career. He's like, I'm not gonna not take this job. Over yeah. some hypothetical yeah. in my mind that I could get off for the Texas job, that would be the dream scenario. And if it does come to that point, hey, I, I, the, let the cards be what they are. I just still can't believe that he did it, and I still can't <laughs> believe because I remember when they went to the title game. We had talked about, I think uh, maybe it was the next season, but we talked about in the air one time about Chris Beard in Texas. It was Shaka was still there, and a lot of Texas Tech people were coming at my throat. They're like. He would never leave. He's not going to leave. It's now. not even yeah. po it's yeah. not even possible. Yeah, like that would be yeah. chaos. Right, and that's where we that's where we are. And it felt like that. It felt like a jaded lover 
looking at, you know. Exactly what Auburn fans are saying about Bruce Pearl and Louisville. Yes. I know Bruce Pearl just signed an extension, so I would say that they're probably <laughs> right about that. But uh, it was it was, it was the exact same vibe. That, like, that deal done. They're yeah. Like, yeah, we're not. It was the exact same vibe. That, like, it's it, it, it could, why, why would he do this? Why and, and that brings me to another thing I learned tonight, that, that Texas Tech fans are not only, like, like uh, they, they, they simply do not care about, like, all the things we said or whatever. Um, they're hilarious, dude. They're so yeah. freaking funny because uh, I, I think, you know, I'm trying to put myself in their shoes. I, I would look around. I would say like, th- this might be reactionary. This might be a hot take just living in the moment. But Texas Tech basketball is in a better spot right now than Texas basketball is. I know Texas thinks that they're they're in a better spot. But we, I've, I've made this point before, dude. I think Texas is too cool. I think Texas will always be too cool. I don't think they actually care that much about winning as a university. Yeah. For God's sakes, when Texas Tech goes to Texas, when the rematch will, will happens. Will this be reciprocated? That's the real no. question. No. I mean, yeah, we like know the half answer. Half the arena is going to be Texas Tech fans. <laughs> we know the answer. So is if no, I'm yeah. like, what is so funny to me is that you know, if you're likening this to a breakup, uh, uh, a, a relationship, if you will, Tate, a, a romantic relationship. That's what you have to do in sports. Yeah, the breakup happens. Uh, if if you are living the better life than your ex, yeah. Typically, most people would say, like, who cares? Forget them. Like, they're down in the gutter. They're, they're Texas. I don't know how Texas is still. Texas will probably fall from 23rd to 24th in the AP poll. I don't, I don't understand how t- Texas keeps getting right. Texas sucks. Texas has sucked all year. They're, they're, they're fraudulent. We, we've, we've, we were early on this. Yeah, we told you. Um, Texas Tech is awesome. Texas Tech has been a great surprise. Texas Tech has been a ton of fun to watch. All those transfers are, that are coming together. Mark Adams is, you know. What they're building there is amazing. The facilities are amazing. Like they, they actually have something here. And if if you would think that like there would be some small part of Texas Tech would be like, we hate that guy. But, but also we're good. We're good. We're so like well. whatever. It all worked out for us. No, they don't care. Like, they don't we're care. Still, we're still gonna hate you. We're still gonna hate you. And it, it's gotten so bad that there was a report before this game that Chris Beard and Mark Adams got in a confrontation of sorts last night when mm-hmm. he got there. And then Mark Adams was asked about it in the post game. And he said that we're good. That's BS. That never happened. You know what I mean? But like, that's where we are. Like you can say something like that and it just gets, it feels gets right. legs because yeah. it feels true it because feels it feels like real. It, would, yeah. it feels like Mark Adams would have some sort of beef with right. Chris Beard, even though they right. have this working relationship and probably have none at all. So Dude, it, it it was a heightened reality for the night. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, it felt like college basketball, a stage. Didn't feel like real life. Felt like kind of anything goes. And at halftime, all the guys were like, I love the hatred in the building. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> yeah, <that> was <laughs> just wild. <laughs> Just love seeing this. Who was it, Dalen? That that was like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it hit or uh, uh, Crispin? It was John Crispin that was like, that was like, I love all this hatred, but this is uh, they were basically like inciting a riot. They're just like, <laughs> I love that that all like, this is happening, but at the same time, more. they're trying to distance themselves. Or like, I, I didn't, but I also don't. Same time, show a little bit of respect. Show a little bit of respect, but continue. <laughs> the beard is a pussy champ. We like yes. that. Yes, more of the that. the the flipping off. The the but maybe just do one bird. One don't, bird. Don't do double bird. Yeah, <laughs> tone it down a little bit. But that was like trying to find where the light is. Was so funny. That was tonight. That yeah. was the entire experience. And Chris Beard, I mean, give him credit. I think he handled it, as, you know, as best he could in the moment. There was no, you know, Terrence Shannon was asked before the game. You know, he was like, he has tough skin. He'll be yeah. fine. Let's just hope yeah. that. There's no technical fouls or someone throws I mean, yeah, something at him. For, for what it's worth, I mean, I don't think Chris Beard regrets a thing. I don't think he's he's you know. I think he's I don't probably think he feels happy bad. I don't think with. he's just like yeah, let's just get it over with. And and he's at his alma mater. As you said they're going to the SEC. They'll 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 win a lot of ball games there. I'm sure, and everything will be fine. You know what it reminded yeah. me of? What LeBron the first time he went back to that's Cleveland. a great call. That's a great call. That's and a great call. And it was like the fans because in this game, if you watch, the fans got fatigued. They because, did because they did. That, that's what happened with Cleveland. You yeah, know what I mean, like when it first started, it was like LeBron got the ball and it was like the booze you've never. I mean, but then he gets the ball so much they couldn't keep up. You know what I mean? They were like, "This guy's touching." And then the ball he too were running much. him off the court. Yeah, and then he starts too. like <laughs> dropping forty points on him. Again, oh so, man, yeah. that's a great call. Yeah, that's that, a, that was that's the a, last time I remember. I, I I can't remember other things that come to. I I guess. Uh, there was one time Bo Ryan at the shot with Ohio State, like the 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 the, the 2011 when Ohio State started like 20 something to no. They, their first loss is at Wisconsin. Yeah. Jared Solinger says like uh, someone spit on him and the like they, the mm. Wisconsin fans rushed the floor. Jared Solinger says someone spits on him. 
Bo Ryan's asked. Is this about a it. was this a Marcus Smart? Might have been. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Bo, Bo Ryan's asked about it. He says that the quote he had was "Deal with it." He's like, <laughs> we won. Deal with it. So then, when Wisconsin comes to Ohio State, <laughs> we won. The student deal with section it. had "Deal with it" towels, and they're yeah. holding. It. And See, then, that's how that's that's what we, they were trying and to. Promote. And then Ohio State destroyed. Like I, they hit like I think it was like fourteen for fifty. It was like a, a Big Ten record or something. Most threes and ran them off the court. Uh but yeah, the, the, these moments stick with you, man, and that's what that's what makes the sport special. It's like it, it is the hatred. I mean, I I I, I yeah. welcome it. I love all of it, as you said. Like the the there 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 is a line, I guess. The the physical, if, the, if it turns physical, I guess I don't love that as much. But um, at the same time, we look back on the Cincy Xavier brawl and everyone glorifies Zip them it. up. <laughs> they changed the they changed the name of that rivalry from shootout because they're like this is, there's a little too much violence in this. Yeah, yeah, no, we're, we're, they were trying to like change, it. and then every Cincinnati Xavier fan was like, no, no, no. Go back. Go back to the old ways. We love that. Yes. Punch each other more. Yes. That's exactly what yes. we want. Turn this rivalry up. Yeah. So um what a night. What a what a what a fun experience. What a We learned who Texas was. We yeah. kind of knew who they were. I think Texas Tech is a fascinating team when it comes to the tournament. You know what I mean? There's They're good, dude. There's a reason to buy in yeah. Texas Tech. And uh it's not because of Chris Beard. And it's not because They're of deep. They're, yeah, I mean, this yeah. is this is a program that has a lot of talent and Give Mark Adams a lot of credit. He found a lot of guys that were winners and brought them in. Mm -hmm. And Chris Beard did not do that. He brought in (laughs) non-losers. And here we are. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You're right. I mean, right. it's kind of a, a simple situation, but congratulations to Texas Tech. I mean, I, I they got a great program. Like yeah. they're they're legitimately like get like, over Chris. That's Beard. what we learned tonight yeah. is that te- past Chris Beard. That Texas Tech has a legitimately great basketball program. If Mark Adams decides he's like a Bill Guthridge type, and he's like, you know what, I I I just wanted to be the guy this that bridges between, this. Yeah, I'm gonna step down. If he retires in three, I don't know that you know whatever. If if Mark Adams, you look up and you lose Mark Adams as a coach. They're gonna be fine, dude. They they got a great program. They're gonna they're gonna move forward and be good, and that's pretty exciting. I love that mm. about college basketball. Auburn's the same way. Auburn kind of, twenty nineteen. They both make the final four. They both feel like they had Virginia on the ropes. They both feel like they probably should have won a national title. Now we look up. Auburn's number one in the country. Texas Tech is rolling. And they're gonna be, they're gonna be great. So and Virginia, Virginia is also <laughs> still playing basketball. Yeah, they're in the well, ACC. Speaking of the ACC, can we talk about this Carolina Louisville game? I didn't watch it. <gasps> Um, I just saw the timeline Ooh. going nuts about it. What the hell happened? Ooh. Stuff being thrown on the floor. Yeah. Can you can you take off the? I mean, you're literally wearing a, a North Carolina. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was wearing team, when so. I came in because I was watching North Carolina. Um, did Carolina? Did, did did the refs cheat? What happened? Oh, I mean, Roger Ayers had a very clinical game. I mean, this was. Look, I don't like Duke wins. I don't like to win like Duke. This was a Duke victory. This was a. I mean, North Carolina lost the game, or I mean, North Carolina won the game, seemingly so. In the end of regulation, Caleb Love is dribbling the ball up. They're up to. Mm-hmm. You're thinking Louisville's going to have to foul at some point. Just don't turn the ball over. Turnover. Caleb Love turnover. Game tie, we go to overtime. I'm thinking to myself, game over. You know, it is what it is. But once we get to overtime, it's just a lot of fouls, a lot of technicals. A lot of uh, overreactions. All of them going against Louisville. All of them going against Louisville at home, <laughs> which is like why I said it's more of a Duke victory. You know what I mean? It felt very Duke. I mean, even Armando Baycott, there's all this controversy. Did he trip uh, Curry? You know what I mean? I'm like, what is this, Grayson Allen? Like, I don't want to I don't want to deal with this. Uh, Caleb Love, I mean, he's playing like a Duke point guard, you know, I mean, losing the ball. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm just like, it was not Carolina basketball. I did not enjoy watching this game. I actually feel... For Mike Rutherford, I haven't reached out to him, but I, I mean, I could see. Should we call him right now, live on the show. No, we should. I, don't, I, don't <laughs> uh, I could see the Louisville, the pain of the Louisville fans. Granted, I don't think they acted as you know, as ACC as they maybe should have. But I mean, that they understand. Like, if you're a Louisville fan, you hate Tobacco Road team. Right. I, I don't right. blame them. I would too. This is the Tobacco Road Conference. You are the plus one to the party. Right. And when and when push comes to shove. These guys that are the officials that have been in the league for 30 plus years, like they have a formula. You know, they, they have they have a a, a channel yeah, to pull on where they're yeah. like, Carolina is, you know, Carolina needs better help. team. Louisville season's over. Louisville season's Carolina over. Carolina needs help. Carolina's got to win. Carolina it's, can't lose this yeah, game. Yeah. And, you know, the interim coach for Louisville, he got a technical foul. It was it was a a call on Baycott, or that should maybe should have been on Baycott, but it's not against Baycott on a rebound. He goes crazy off the reaction of that foul. Then he gets teed up. Mm-hmm. Then you're just like giving Carolina points. So like the overreaction, that's not 
that that pretty much was the end once he did that and got teed up. But also the reaction was valid. You know what I mean? It was yeah. a valid reaction. I understand why he's frustrated. So it's kind of like this so you're admitting endless a, loop to nowhere. You're admitting it was a rough show. I'm admitting it was a Duke win. <laughs> and guess what a Duke win is? It's still a win. You know what I mean? At the end of the day. You know, yeah, uh, yeah. That's how you have to say it. If if you're if you're the team that benefits from horrible refs, you you say it's bad both ways. It was bad and both ways. And then it was bad both ways. You also say like they the the refs uh, how, how do you justify that? No, it was a physical say, game. Like, no it was matter, a physical game. No matter how bad the refs are, you still have to step up and make plays, and you can't use that as an excuse. And, yeah. You know, Carolina, it was bad both ways, but Carolina powered through the, the horrendous calls. Against the I mean, Armando Baycott tweeted, great hard physical game was a lot of fun. And I think that's like the way I think that's the way we take it. I would have, I would have. Mike Rutherford tweeted, I'm just sitting here with zero idea what the type. <laughs> Legit cannot believe what I just watched. Yeah, no, I mean, the. The Louisville fans are upset, rightfully yeah. so. But yeah. uh, you know, I mean, what is this season for them? Um, nothing. It's, yeah. yeah, it's over. Yeah. Congratulations, you're gonna get a new coach soon. Next year, tomorrow, tomorrow. Do you think, do you think this is the worst thing? That ha- do you think tonight's the worst thing that's happened to Louisville basketball? I possibly ever? the way they react, the way that they're acting, <laughs> it sounds like it. Honestly, I mean, and they're 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 acting so insane right now that. They might well, hire. On, they might side. hire. Their, okay. Okay. The so interim coach this, might be the head coach. The season's dead, as we know. They, they yeah. the Chris Mack leaves, and best and, player didn't play in this game. Also, so we understand the situation at Louisville, but couldn't you make the argument that the fact that all of those things are true is exactly why they needed this win so badly tonight? They needed just something to. Should it be if dude. they beat Carolina, they can then just ride off into the sunset. This no, we, we at least accomplished that. If Carolina was ranked, that would be great. You should have beat Duke. If you want to give all this effort and go crazy and, you know, do it to Duke. You just had your chance. Your chance is over. That's your official stance. Is you're My just official mad. stance was you're just mad we you should have beat Duke. You should have beat Duke. You should have beat Duke. <laughs> <laughs> that was your chance. <laughs> oh, my God. Let's move on. Uh, let's do King of the Mountain. Can oh, we do that? Yeah, let's do King it. King of the Mountain presented by Coors Light. Coors Light is the one I choose when I need to unwind. So when you want to hit reset, reach for the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light and the new look delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash TNT. Please celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Uh, King of the Mountain, it's a it's a pretty simple premise. If you're new to the show, it's this. Uh, it works exactly like every other King of the Mountain type premise would work. Who is your mm. King of the Mountain, Tate, in college basketball as it stands right now in February? Well, luckily, luckily he survived tonight in Louisville. He was at the game. Um, he is my head coach forever and always. Mr. Hubert Ray Davis. Williams. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Roy Williams came back and got honored on Saturday. He was at the game in Louisville. No, yeah, he was at the Louisville game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They were He's throwing... just going to every Carolina game. Yeah, Is that dude, what he, does? he loves loves the Tar Heels. Can't get enough of it. Louisville fans were throwing things at him, being very disrespectful, you know. But what can you do? That's just who they are. Um, you move on. Roy Williams, though, King. Are they of the... really throwing things. At yeah, Roy Williams, uh, King of the Mountain. Uh, and uh, you know, there, there's really not much to say. You're a banner guy. Jim's a banner guy. I'm a banner guy. Yep. The banner is hanging now. Coach Roy Williams in the Dean Dome, honored forever. Oh, that's what they did with that's the, what they did on the Saturday. Game. Yeah, yeah. So and they MJ was back, and yeah. the 1982 team came back and got honored. Uh, James Worthy wasn't there. For Sam what? Perkins. What did they for winning the? Oh, okay. <laughs> now, like if the 1924 team was there, one, it would have been amazing. But two, and the 1924 <laughs> Butler team shows, <laughs> shows up, up and they play. <laughs> 100 year old guys are playing each other that'd be a great game i'd watch that um but yeah the 82 team was there roy was there carolina actually played great for once michael jordan uh roy williams together on the court kind of like yeah. did the the dean smith michael you remember the picture of michael jordan kissing dean smith on the yeah. head you know they kind of had that moment again yeah. um but roy williams it was just great to see him on top and remind, then he owns nc state so it was great to get that word remind remind the listeners because i definitely know the answer to this question yes and uh i don't need you to remind me whatsoever uh but people listening and watching at home probably don't remember this uh was roy williams on staff when jordan was there yes yeah he was okay michael jordan was recruited I, by roy williams that's right i knew that I, and roy williams I, found michael jordan and said hey i really like this kid I think we should give him a chance. And Bill Guthrie said he was unmilked. <laughs> like, basically, like... Roy Williams milked Michael Jordan. Yes, That's the yes. Got milked. That's how they have... But, like, basically, the, the story goes that, like, they didn't think... Bill Guthrie was like, this guy, I don't know. I can see a lot of talent, but all he does is take a bunch of jump shots. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I don't know if he's going to develop. Roy Williams like, I believe in this guy. 
Michael Jordan's dad made a wood stove for Roy Williams, like for his house. And like they were very close friends and everything. So Mike, Michael Jordan's career started with Roy Williams being like, I'm when his high school coach cut him, and then Roy Williams knocked on the door and said, son, I know a thing or two about J.P. Well, see, his high school coach, Pop Herring, was the one that first called Roy Williams and was like, you should come see this kid. Okay. And Dave Odom was the coach at ECU and was watching all these games. He went to every single Laney game and was like, this guy's unbelievable. Well, there you go. You know? And that's how he got to go. North Carolina. Roy Williams is the best. I love him forever. King of the Mountain. <laughs> Throw it out there. I, he had to be king of the mountain once, you know what I mean? This is a segment that will continue, hopefully, for a yeah. long time. Roy Williams is not a part of the game. I will never get to do this again. No, so. I would I would actually love it if you just made Roy the king of the I, mountain every week. I it, <laughs> I was between making Coach K king of the mountain every single week, just like <laughs> out of respect, but I'll do Roy this week. I love it. Uh, my king of the mountain, um, as we know with Coors Light, the, the mountains are blue. That's how you know the, the beer is cold, Tate. Mm. And this week for me, my mountains are very blue. My mountains are a uh, uh, big blue nation pantone of blue i don't know what 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 pantone that is but it's big blue nation pantone <laughs> uh it is oscar Shibwe. yeah in my in my estimation and i think in vegas's estimation too has become the the odds on national player of the year favorite this i think was, so when andy was on the show uh on friday we we joked about it that that uh Agbaji versus Shibwe, kansas kentucky on saturday was the two national player of the year leaders or two of the three if you want to throw johnny davis in there um, playing each other, and that it was going to be pitted as a head-to-head game, even though they'll never guard each other, and mm-hmm. they're actually not playing really against each other, other than, you know, uh, that he he is not not only because it's not because Kentucky won by a ton, which we can talk about too, because Kentucky is very much back, and I I I do fully believe in Kentucky as a national title contender. By the way, um, it's not like that, that it's not even that Agbaji played poorly. It's that Shibwe has has become so dominant and so consistent and so like th- this was a game that uh uh you know Keon Brooks played out of his mind had yeah, he did high 27 points mm-hmm. uh Wheeler and Washington are awesome as they always are and like they, they make that team go um which is why every time they go down Kentucky seems to struggle uh Kelvin Grady is is blossoming into an awesome player like he he he, sh- he shed his role of of at Davidson where he has to do everything and now he's just settled into like just simply making shots. And yeah. Like I, I can do that. I'm going to do that very well. Um, and, and all of this is going on and, and no matter when Keon Brooks steps up, Keon Brooks doesn't show up. If severe Wheeler is playing well, severe Wheeler is not playing well, or he's out of the game, whatever. Oscar Shibway has just consistently put up numbers after numbers. He had 17 and 14 against Kansas. Yeah. He is, uh, just, he he is the most inevitable thing in college basketball right now. That every single night, you know that he's and, and I think the the, and the the stats don't really do him justice. I mean, he like the screens that he sets. Yes, like some of the extra which sounds possession. ridiculous. But no, I mean, <laughs> yeah, like he can set a screen that like rattles the guard for the other team, yes. and like two the next two possessions, he's like, I don't want to get hit again. I'm not trying to hedge hard because I I don't want to deal with this guy. It's the little things, and then the stat line is still ridiculous. If if you're going to be known as a rebounder, you have to uh, you you have to grab so many rebounds. If you're going to be just like like the 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 meat and potatoes of your national player of the year campaign is, I'm a great rebounder. You have to be rebounding at just an insane level to like actually get people to 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 care. This man has done that. This man did that when he had the twenty whatever rebounds. Um, he's done that a few times, right? Mm-hmm. The twenty plus. Uh, I forget what game it was, at, at, but he he had the sign holding up with the rebound counter and and, and all that stuff. Um, he he has he has created an aura around him where people like want to tune in and watch watch Oscar Shibwe grab rebounds. And on top of that, he's averaging 16 points a game. He's shooting 65 percent from the field, uh, or 61 percent. I'm sorry, 73 percent from the free throw line. Tate. He's averaging 1.7 steals, 1.3 blocks. He's great defensively. Yeah. Um. So he's my king of the mountain because I do feel like it is his award to lose, and 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 I say that in, in a way that I've not said it about anybody else this year, which is like, wink, wink, tongue in cheek. I'm only meaning for like this moment in time, which is what we've done for like 30 different guys. Is yeah. he your national player of the year right yeah, now? Yeah, and yeah, we, yeah. we kind of do that knowing. Just fast forward three days, it'll be someone else. I don't think it's gonna be anybody else. I think Oscar Shibwe is more or less locked it up. Um. Or has he? Because Johnny Davis and I brought, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Shibway, Shibway. Kentucky's gonna roll. Kentucky is very, very good. This was his Heisman moment, this his was, Naismith moment, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. Wooden moment, whatever. He wasn't even the best player on the floor. Like he was. Yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. What, but that's what's crazy to me is if you watch the game, you you wouldn't necessarily if you're if you're doing game MVPs, he's not your MVP, and yet he's still putting a monster number, still impacting the game. I I can't get around 
the one thing that that gives me pause about it is is what I said just uh, off the cuff when we were talking to Andy on on Friday, and I've thought about it more. I I can't get around the idea that if if Shibway goes down for some not even injury, just like I don't know, he gets a positive Foul, it says fouls out, fouls whatever. Out, yeah. Um, if Shibway is out of the game for a while, Kentucky's really not necessarily screwed, and that's a tough thing for me to reconcile. Of like this guy is is dominant. He's obviously um, you know, I he, he, I would vote for him for national player of the year, but at the same time, uh, when it, it, it's when when Ty Ty Washington gets blown up on a screen, Kentucky fans are like, "Well, there we go, we're done, the, the game's over." If if Oscar Shibway fouled out, no Kentucky fans like, "Well, we're screwed." There we go, you know, depending on the matchup, but they're they're probably not doing that. I don't know how I reconcile that, like how yeah. how you can, you know what I mean? Does that yeah. make any sense? No, it definitely does. I mean, it's also one of those things with him where he checks so many of the boxes. Like you said, we're trying to find who the guy is, and he kind of fits the bill in every single way. But also, I think all the bigs have had this weird, uh, like, secondary conversation. Even with Kofi, we're talking about it. Kofi, yeah. Like a secondary conversation of, like, when they do – Trace Jackson Davis is a little bit of this, where when they do play Baycott at Carolina, when they do play through them, yes, it's good, and yes, they look great. But sometimes, you know, when they're not on the floor, the the impact – the team almost can be better because there is more space at times, right? There – But but it's still – it still lends itself to the the whole idea that Oscar Sheboy can be Anthony Davis of 2012. And we're 10 years removed from that. But, like, you can sell that idea of, like, they had this big man. He's going to be kind of the anchor of this team defensively, do all the dirty work. He doesn't necessarily have to score 20 right. points. He's not going to take 20 shots. But they could still win the championship because of him. Anthony Davis might be the one national player of the year that, that I can think of that uh... – if if the game is close, it's a tie game with 30 seconds left. You're not saying they have to get the ball to Anthony Davis. Yeah, which is crazy to think about. And she was yeah. she was that way. And let's be honest, Anthony Davis doesn't want the ball. Yeah, <laughs> I mean he doesn't. Still he doesn't. Still doesn't. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> he might have been, he might have been the first Michael Porter Jr. But yeah. back then you had to play a little bit more. You know, but he definitely he's like oh, I don't want any of that. Cal's like good. drawn up in the huddle. Yeah, he's like nah. I think Kid Gilchrist is, is is open. No, uh, so th- that gives me pause uh, <laughs> thinking about Shiba. But but I think that uh, if if you're gonna you know like th- th- those would be the knocks against his national player of the year campaign is that it, uh, Kentucky isn't necessarily screwed if he's out of the game. Yeah, and I there there's not a you know if 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 it's a close game um late you're you're not necessarily saying we got to get the ball to Oscar which is 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 a wild cuz even you're talking like well, well you, you you might think that's just cuz he's a big guy that's that wouldn't be the case at Kofi that wouldn't be the case at Trace Jackson Davis that's not the case at Drew Timmy all those guys late in the game you're like we got to get this guy a touch we got to we got to work through him whatever you wouldn't ne- necessarily say that about Oscar he could he could like make the play for you but like you know there's there's a world where they don't they they, they don't go through him but if if those two things are going to be true, he's got to be putting up just the most insane rebounding numbers, and he's averaging over 15 rebounds a game. Yeah, for one of the best teams in the country and one of the best conferences in the country. And, and Anthony Davis, what that's did undeniable. He, he averaged 10 rebounds a game. He averaged like seven blocks a game. That year. Yeah, Sorry. true. I think he had like 11 blocks yeah. in the title game or something. Yeah, and and that's the same thing where like like Shibway and Davis are obviously very different players, but it's the same sort of like. Just like I, I've never seen it like this before. Yeah, it's exactly. And and I keep waiting for him to fall off. It has not happened. Here's your Naismith Awards. Sir. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think my king of the mountain. I like that. I think there that's a go. great pick. And the Big O is, uh, he's a great ambassador for college basketball. The only thing that sucks is that he left Huggy Bear. You know, mm-hmm. like I don't know if you saw Huggy Bear. Uh, I think it was last night. He's wearing the gold chain. I mean, he he is on one, and I'm just like wa- watching Oscar Sheboy, and I'm like, I can't believe. We, had we need to have Huggy Bear retirement watch. I'm like just so worried. I've been worried about. Yeah, I, I would be worried coach. about every coach of like that ilk. Even yeah. though Tom Izzo has like assured us it's okay, I'm worried about all. I'm worried about all. I've been worried about all. Yeah, that that entire generation of coaches basically. I mean, look at the quarterbacks in football. You right. know, that generation just left the game. Right. We're losing all of our coaches. Who's the big Ben of Coach K? <laughs> <laughs> Jim like that. Got, that got Jim. Uh, speaking of Tom Izzo, speaking of uh, worried that Tom Izzo might retire, th- this was me when Amani Bates oh uh, decommitted from Michigan State and went to Memphis. Yeah, uh, I remember the the show. The first show we did was was me saying, "I I hope this doesn't end Tom Izzo. I hope he doesn't 
look at the world around him and say, this game has passed me by. Yeah. Fast forward to where we're at now. Michigan State is, I believe, on the top of the Big Ten standings. I, I want to fact check that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they, they won tonight in Maryland. Malik Hall gets the last second shot. Um, and they, the Michigan State is rolling, whether they're – no, uh, yeah, yeah, they're tied. They're tied with Illinois and Wisconsin. They're all 8-2 and two and Purdue's a game back. Um, mi- fast forward to today, Michigan State is sitting atop the Big Ten standings, and we just get word that – that w- w- what did what what did the tweet say? Amani Bates is not going to play against uh, Cincinnati on Thursday, and it it his, his it's called into question whether he's going to be with the program the rest of the season. Mm-hmm. This is both like shocking and not a surprise, even the slightest at the same time. Yeah, shout out, how to, that shout out works, to Jake but... Fisher. He's the one that's reporting this Bleacher Report guy, and Jake's you know Jake's reporting it. He has some legitimate sources, but his dad Elgin Bates came out and said. <laughs> Uh, that he has no clue what the report is about. Um, Amani had an appointment to see a specialist back home about his back. About his back, he's been having pain the past three weeks, and we're going to figure out what's going on. Oh, so, Amani Bates, in honor of Coach K, is pulling the back excuse. Oh, so that is. Um, so first, he's not playing because he's he's hurt. It's back problem. He's got back problems. Or do you think this is a uh, um? A Brady move where you refuse to report. <laughs> you say, I never, that that's not mm. true. And then three days later, Imani Bates is going to post a nine slide text message basically on Instagram. Mm. It's just like, I, I'm taking my talents to Donda Academy. Or, he said he has no plans at all to leave the Memphis program. He does not. He no said plans. that or his That's what his said dad that. said. <laughs> That's what his dad, Elgin Bates, has said. said it, and, and let me, uh, speaking of that family, let me pull up something that they also said once upon a time. Let me try to find, let me see if I can find this. Uh, where is this? Uh, yeah, here it is. Uh, when, when asked what he likes about Michigan State, Imani Bates responded, everything. Mm. Uh, then they also said, they've been showing love to me since I was in seventh grade. Imani said to the Spartans, they've been recruiting me hard since then. So I just know that they're showing that they love me genuine and that they have been here for a long time. I'm big on loyalty, and they've showed me all loyalty, so I have to show them love back. So uh, I'm, I'm sure we could take them at their word, right? Yeah, and he I went think, to Michigan State, showed yeah, loyalty. Yes. So I think we can take them. Wait, yeah. what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is, a, this is a fascinating story because if you're Penny, you're in free fall right now. You yeah. have been yeah. for probably a couple weeks. And if you, get, if you get a bombshell on the other side of that and Imani leaves – Jalen Duran is going to be a top 10 pick in the draft, so that's going to be good for you. But if Amani Bates leaves, the next LeBron James. Amani can't, hurts. like, I, 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 I've run out of energy making jokes about Amani Bates, honestly, because it's, it's, it, for his own sake, I hope he's back. I, 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 I hope, hope he's, back. I hope he's, yeah. I hope he's not. We want him to be at Memphis for two years. Yes. That's what we said. We're like, if we're yes. going to go play at Memphis, Stay at Memphis. Don't go to Memphis, then go to the G League or go to Overtime Elite or whatever it is. You know how every uh, the, Nojel Eastern's the situation that comes to mind when he transferred from Purdue and Matt Painter's like, I don't think that's a great idea, Nojel. And everyone's like, of course you'd say that because you're the coach. You're jealous. And, yeah, you're yeah. just jealous that he's moved on to, to greener pastures. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I wonder if if anyone, even even the most extreme example of that, could make the case that Imani Bates leaving Memphis halfway through the season <laughs> to go play for the Overtime Elite is what's best for him that he's just doing what's best for him and his family. And there is know. a chance that if he did leave, that that would come out yeah. as like, there, like there's like someone, the there's like someone that just, would yeah. put that out there. It's that. And then it's also like college basket. Th- this is another example of college, college basketball. Is dead. Yeah. yeah it's college basketball is dead. This is the path forward. If it's Penny always- Hardaway can't figure yeah, it out at yeah, Memphis, yeah, the no college one. basketball is dead. <laughs> oh man. Well, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad they at least said that. So there is some hope. I, I, I genuinely hope that he does not leave. I mean, it'd be, it would be slightly funny, but like, honestly, I I'm at the point where it's just more sad than fun. when we so started I he, this I hope he stays at Memphis. I hope he kills it. That's the fun. That's the fun content cycles. Like Imani Bates comes back next year mm-hmm. and is borderline all American. And we're laughing at how funny it was that he, the, the circus of last year. And now he's gotten through that and he's good. It's not, gonna, it's probably not going to happen, but. When you watched him play, I, I I don't think it inspires like the idea that there's gonna be a a, a switch to be mm-hmm. flipped. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To be an All American, I feel like he has a ways to go to get there. But he has the tools. You can yeah. see that he has the tools. But where do you go to develop your tools nowadays? You know what I mean? It's definitely not overtime elite. It's definitely not the G League. It can be college depending on the situation. I'm not sure it is at Memphis. Maybe it is with Larry Brown there. I don't know. But like. You know what I mean? Like, where do you even go if you yeah. have? Because it used to be an easy thing. It's like, 
that guy has this wingspan. You know, he can jump this high. Do it. We can get him to be good at basketball. We can develop this talent. But that's not even the case anymore. So you're like, I don't even know what the best. When you ask, like, what's the best thing for him to do? I have no idea. It's not to work out with some trainer, you know? <laughs> like, it's not to go to some NBA franchise that's not going to develop you and say, like, yeah. oh, you're not who we thought you were. Get out of here. Here's a two-way contract. Go to I, mean, league. I mean, there's nowhere for him to go. Really honestly, to develop. honestly, the best move for him this is this is the boomer take but like it's it's the truth is just to to like shut up and put your head down and like just work work like like work <laughs> as hard as you can in the off season and figure out what you suck at and try to make yeah. it better and and become a, a a success story become a guy that like everyone doubted and counted out and i understand that sounds ridiculous cuz he was not doubted like this man was called the next lebron the next player. lebron dude. but now we're at a point in his life where he is being doubted and 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 you asked me the question what would I set the odds at if, uh, you know, that, that he would ever even play a second in the NBA? Yeah, play a game. Would he start a game in the NBA? What are those odds? It used to be, like, minus a million. Yeah. Like, obviously he would. Yeah, He's yeah, the next yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, And now we're like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't yeah. Know, yeah. Yeah, we don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, what what else what else we want to talk about Auburn quickly Auburn yeah. Alabama game uh, a game that as as I said at the top I think Alabama did their best to make it interesting but um, Auburn just Walker, Walker Kessler Walker had Kessler. eight blocks in this game yeah that's like all you need to know you put Roy Williams on your king of the mountain when the <laughs> the guy that ended him is that was not the guy that ended him Garrison Brooks his fellow SEC rival that's who ended him he's watching this guy play in front of him he's like if I can't play over this guy. It's over. Uh, but yeah, shout out to Auburn. I mean, they're, they're yeah, they're, they're how really did how did Auburn formidable. swing it where every single game they play is at home? I don't understand this. Yeah. Every single time I watch out the one game I remember they well, there's two. Dude, there Bruce was Pearl, man. There was uh, uh the when they played at Bama, we got excited about that because I, I remember I was like talking about this exact thing that they play so many games at home. I was like excited to see them do something on the road and, and uh they went into the Bama environment and, and played really well, obviously. And then the other the other game I remember watching where they were not at at, at home was uh, Missouri, when mm -hmm. which was Hansel Martin handed them the game. Um, I don't know how they I don't know how they did that. How did how was every single operate? Am I crazy? Do you feel that too? I feel like every time I've watched them, they played at home. Like you know, when I've intently watched. I, I watch. That's not true. I watched them when they played in the ballroom. The, the in the Bahamas. Yeah, I, I we watched watch UConn them. beat yeah, them, yeah. but that feels like yeah eons ago yeah they didn't even know how good they were in that game you know like they were like i guess we could lose to uconn are we entering um it might be a good thing for auburn to lose a game territory yeah you you, you love that whenever a team that's undefeated loses you're like this is actually good or that, you know, that's what i said for game. baylor last yeah. year yeah yeah Had to. Are, are, have you gotten there with auburn yet do you feel like they need to lose one of these games at some point i think they Aub don't go to kentucky kentucky yeah. they, they only play once that would be like the game if you're not paying attention to scheduling you look at the sec you'd be like well, Kentucky played there, so won't that be the game when they play in Rupp? They do not play in Rupp. Mm -hmm. So, like, which which the game? I should pull up their schedule and see. I mean, the game, I mean, whatever it is, they need to have a game where one of those guys, Jabari or Walker, gets in foul trouble so they can see if they can deal with that storm, you know what I mean? And they need to have a game where these guards have to kind of answer the bell a little bit. So. At Arkansas next Tuesday? No. Uh, Maybe. Maybe. Tennessee at the end of the month at Tennessee. I like at Tennessee. That's Give me at Tennessee. Yeah, at Tennessee's, Florida's interesting. At Florida's at Florida's, Florida's coming. Another one. Yeah, those are those are two games. They're like it's not easy to win at either one of those places. I feel like the losing at Tennessee is more uh, uh, justifiable. So it's yeah, it's not even a bad game. loss. That's not the one you want. You want like a semi bad loss if you're Auburn, so you can reset. Missouri could have been the like, one. Like uh, remember Oklahoma State wasn't bad last year. They had the number one pick on the team, but you remember like Baylor. Baylor lost at Kansas at Allen Fieldhouse, but then Baylor also lost Tate in the Big Twelve tournament to Oklahoma State. Yeah, people forget that. People forget, and that was good for them, I think. And they, they, they I think it helped Cade go number one. Yeah, I really do. And then they reset their whole mojo, and then they went nuts in the NCAA tournament. I feel like Auburn. Maybe that's it. They lose to Kentucky in the SEC championship or something. Maybe earlier. Maybe they lose earlier in the SEC tournament. Maybe like we're we're both round. in a great like if Auburn enters the NCAA tournament with one loss. They're losing. They're losing. Especially if Auburn's the one yeah. seed in the South and Duke's the two or the three. Yeah. They're losing to Duke. Duke's yeah. going to the final. Four. Yeah. Yeah. The, it's, it's a much better Walker situation. Walker Kessler's final act of letting me down is letting Coach <laughs> K beat him in the Elite Eight. That's his final act. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, what else is there? Uh, th 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 Honestly, that, that was like the... 
I mean, we, the stuff that happened this weekend, obviously we touched on talking about Kansas and Kentucky. I mean, it was a big weekend for the SEC in general. So we should yep. we speak your name, the SEC basketball. SEC, yeah. Kansas is the only home team that lost in the Big 12 SEC Challenge. That was so shocking after all the, the kind of hype leading into it, like we're going to go see, you know, Allen yeah. Fieldhouse and all this sort of stuff. I mean, Kentucky just, I don't know what that was. I, I don't, I... <sighs> I mean, I, we, we've talked about Kansas a lot recently, it feels like. And I've, I've, Kansas you've, is you've who been, I, I bet on Kansas to win yeah, the title at the beginning of the you're a lot higher I on, apologize. You're a lot higher on Kansas than I am. Uh, I actually thought tonight, not having Ekbaji, not having Rumi Martin, and, and winning at Iowa State. Pretty impressive. It was pretty impressive, yeah. yeah. Or maybe it's just a reflection that like, Iowa State isn't that good. It, also, there was some stat that was like Bill they, Self is like 66 and, and 10 coming off a loss or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, the, the, that's just like, I don't know. Bill, Bill Self Magic, you know what I mean? Just a race. I don't know what that was, but Bill Self Magic. I let that be, like, under that category. They had to bounce back. You can't get embarrassed at home to Kentucky and then lose that next game. I wonder how Iowa State fans feel about this season because I, I they're definitely at a point right now where they realize – uh fraud's not the right word but like you know no, they, they they realize like they're, you're not final four caliber you're not what but it's not, just so nice I think you were 13 and 0 or 12 and 0 however they started they were yeah. so excited they were like oh my god are we uh, how high did they get ranked did they get in the top 10 i it came close to they it got up to like 12 yeah. um and now the wheels are falling off a little bit but at the same time they won two freaking games last year so I'm sure they're still fine, but it's got to be a little bit of a bummer because yeah you know you're 12 and 0 and you're ranked whatever it was in the country almost top 10 yeah I'm sure they're coming off a, a season that was, I mean, yeah, abysmal. Like it was something that you want to forget forever. You bring in a new coach. He's immediately brought a new kind of spark to this team. Everyone wants to talk about them. So it's been nice. It was yeah. a good win for Kansas. Yeah. Um, you know who else I want to talk about real quick is uh Providence who beat Jim St. John's Johnny's tonight. Sorry, Jim. Sorry, Jim. Um, Providence. <laughs> I don't know how they do it, but they keep winning. They they, they they run the Big they East. Are running the Big East right now. It is uh it, it is remarkable. They they beat Marquette uh, over the weekend too. That was a that was the big Big East game of the weekend. Um, Nate Watson has has just just goes absolutely nuts at the end of that game and and dunks on all of Marquette and um, clinches it for Providence. And then tonight they the St. John Posh Alexander is playing out of his mind and Providence wins that game. I I. Providence is fascinating because they just keep winning. All the all the 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 Providence fans are just like fighting with every college basketball talking head and blue check. Like we deserve X Y Z. Yeah, where's where's our respect? Where's our respect? Yeah. Every algorithm says they're not that good. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, the algorithms do not like. Kim Palm does a lucky thing. I this cracks me up. I this got brought on my radar when I remember uh, uh, Maryland a few years ago. Um, like one of the Jake Lehman Maryland teams was the luckiest team in the country, according mm. to Kim Palm. And Maryland fans were just going bananas. Scott Van Pelt among them was just like, just tweeting, I have no idea what this, what do you mean lucky? What do you mean lucky? We're winning yeah. the games. Isn't yeah. that the point of the game? Uh, so I, I've, I've had the luck thing on my, on my radar uh, ever since then. And Providence, I've been watching them more lately, and every single game comes down to the wire, it feels like. They, they, they've won them, not all of them, but they, they I mean, for God's sakes, they're, they're what, 19 and two now. Uh, the, their two losses, Marquette, the first time they played, they lost by 32. Mm. The other loss they have is Virginia by 18. So their two losses were like, like when the when the bottom falls out, it falls out. But they keep winning these games, Tate. So I was like, I'm I'm curious. I wonder where they rank on the the luck rankings. They are number one by far. A huge mark. It is. It, I I I don't know how to. Uh, their their little luck coefficient is point two three four, Tate. And number two is New Mexico State at point two zero. Point two zero three, so they they have there's like a wide gap and and according to Ken Palm's algorithm, ask me to explain the algorithm. I have no idea what the it's hell. It's a very it luck of the Irish situation, but they are very yeah, lucky totally. and they continue to win and uh, it's 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 fun to watch. So I mean I like Providence. I mean I'm a big Seton Hall guy. We were talking about the Big East before uh, while we were watching the games while we were recording, and I was saying to you that I I wish that we had some COVID passes for some of these teams that we know that are really good. Like Seton Hall is one of those teams I think is really good. I would love to get them, a, you know, a COVID pass. But Providence, I mean, they've just whatever it is. If it's luck, look at the record. I mean, they're they're one gonna... by four today at St. John's. One Marquette game, they won by two. Xavier, their last three games, one by four, one by two, one by three, one win. by seven, one by eight. When is the win? <laughs> Friars for life. It's amazing. They made some sort of deal. I don't know what it is, but sorry for the Johnnies, Jim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have been there. <laughs> we should have been calling. I blame myself. <laughs> 
You would have changed things. Super around. fan, Jim Cunningham. Uh, what other shout outs? Should we just go through some shout outs? Yeah, let's start doing some shout outs. Uh, I want to shout out Steph Curry. I don't know if you saw last night, 21 points in the fourth quarter um, against the Houston Rockets. It was a very, you know, I think what's happening, Father Time, you know, we don't like to talk about Father Time. Mm -hmm. Father Time is coming at Steph Curry and it's happening quickly. Does he suck or not suck this year? I can't, I, I, I've heard it both ways. I've heard that he's, he, he he's was having great. like the worst shooting year great. of his career, but he's he was, also MVP, maybe. He was the MVP for the first like 30 games. Yeah. And that's what I was talking about, Father Time. Yeah. And then it's like, you can see that this guy, you can't just, he's 33 going on 34. You know what I mean? He's running around screens and all that stuff. Yeah. It seems like it's a lot. But last night, Kevin Porter Jr., Curry's not having a good game. Yeah. Kevin Porter Jr. basically is like trying to sun him, staring him down, and he kind of just snapped back to reality a little bit. And it was a prideful thing, but he has 21 points in the fourth quarter, most all season. It was like a little snapshot of a vintage Curry, but it got me worrying that it's like we're going to get less and less of that. Yeah. Because you can't, as you, I mean, that as we all know. Well. No, running yeah, around that like that does not well. age well. And uh, I feel for him. And then it was a back-to-back, -back and I was thinking to myself, he had 40 last night. I was like, is he gonna play in this back to back? Like, is he gonna play? Are you tomorrow? putting you're putting Steph on retirement watch? No, but he didn't play. He didn't play tonight in the back to back. Interesting. After forty and thirty seven. What, what is what does his late career game look like? He just spot up shooting like that. That's hilarious to think about. Is like Steph is like forty two years old. And he just sits in the corner. Well, comes off the bench. How the deep? Corner. How deep can he go? Like how far back can he go? Because he can't get by anybody, right? Let's yeah. say we're two years now. He can't yeah. get by anybody. How far back can he? Is it at half <laughs> he's court? Like, he's just at half court. <laughs> like they're running offense, and then like someone just throws it all the way back, and he's back there. I mean, who knows? It get, it could be it could get wild. Is all I'm saying. So shout out to Steph Curry. I love right. to see the vintage Steph Curry come out. Um, that was fun. Good. Um, I want to shout out the uh, Wyoming Cowboys. Big win over Colorado. Oh, that State. was a great Hunter game. Maldonado had 35 points. Uh, he's from Colorado Springs, too. So that was like an extra twist of the knife to mm. against his hometown school. Had 31 on Friday versus Air Force State. Wyoming is the hot team. Uh, we should have talked about them before today. I wish we would have been on the radar. Um, I, 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 because right I, cause I feel like I feel like they're the team everyone's going to start talking about now. I feel like Wyoming is going to be a, a team that people circle and say, mm. I, I really like this team with Graham E.K. and Maldonado. And um, I don't know. The, the Mountain West is really good. San Diego State, Wyoming, uh, Colorado State, Boise are definitely making it. They're at least four bid league. And then yeah. Fresno, you can throw in there. Utah State, I don't think, is making it, but like they're, they're, they're always good. They're always good. Yeah, they got a good program. Um, so shout out to Wyoming. I think they got Boise State at home coming up this week, too. So that'll be. That'll be interesting. Uh, what else is there? What else? What else? I wanted to shout out Baylor. Uh, I watched that game last night, the West Virginia game, and Matthew Meyer was no show in this game until he was until he just came to life. Against West Virginia against against West Virginia. Yeah, I mean it was like that man hates West Virginia. It, no, but it was like I think he, he wants to play there. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I, I like dude. Last year he had his coming out party at West Virginia. This year he he dominated at West Virginia, and then they played in Morgantown. I think it's some with the mullet. I think it's like it these is. Are my people. It's like if you have a mullet, you should be playing at West Virginia. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like some sort of superpower. But in this game, he was MIA. I, I was watching. Yeah. And I was like, man, Matthew Myers got to do something, man. He's got to like get in this game. So and then, just like that, nine points in like crunch time to help them win this game. I mean, I thought West Virginia had a real chance to win this one. Taz Sherman was great. Ends up getting hurt at the end, but uh, I think Baylor's messing with me. By the way, I think yeah, Baylor, they're messing with they're, everybody. They're just kind of like like they're not fully healthy. And they're fully teetering. Yeah, they lose at Bama. They lost. What did what, they lose? Three of six, was it? They're no. just trying to keep people off the scent, I feel like. You know what I mean? Like, they, they don't want us to all know. Like, with them being number one, I think Scott Drew was like, that I don't like bad. this. They I don't like this. They didn't lose. They won two. Yeah, they lost, they had lost three of six. Bama was three of six, and they, then they uh, beat West Virginia. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think there's some trickery going on there. I think there's. And they a, play Kansas on Saturday. It's going to be a good game. At Allen Fieldhouse. That's going to be a good game. So if you're Allen Fieldhouse, after what Kentucky did, I feel like this Saturday is like a reprieve. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, we're, well, that didn't go as planned. We're going to make some noise on Saturday. So that'll be a fun game. That'll be a good one. That'll be a good one. Top uh, ten speaking of the Speaking of the Big 12, I want to shout out TCU, uh, who beat LSU in the SEC Big 12 Challenge, Tate. Um, it was the one, like, surprising bright spot for the big as a 12. big 10 guy and an acc guy are we jealous of the sec big 12 challenge you know what i mean like, like taking place at this point at this point in the season like I, I i would not want the acc big 10 challenge to happen right now 
I definitely wouldn't. No. You know what I mean? No, <laughs> I definitely wouldn't. I mean, Kansas, Kansas's run that they've been on has been, I mean, it always is. The Big 12 was always a gauntlet, but to have Kentucky sprinkled in there and take that out. Just out, randomly just come like, in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just blow you out at home. <laughs> My God. Like, well, there goes our confidence. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I, no, I would hate that. I mean, it's great for a viewer. It's great that like that. No, I'm glad it happens, but I, I don't matchup, feel like yeah. it's uh, I don't feel like it, 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 you know, imposes on the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Uh, TCU, though, beat Oklahoma and Norman to complete the sweep of the Sooners on, on Monday. Um, they, they, they are a team that the last time we talked about them on the show, I think I pointed out that they had a pretty weak non-conference schedule. They were winning a ton of games. Uh, it was when I was going through the list of uh, former player alums who played at their school that are now coaching at their school. And I, I, I said, Jamie Dixon's off to a good start, but who cares? It's a garbage schedule, and I'm sure it's going to fall apart when the Big 12 comes around. Has not fallen apart. They, they are 15-4 and four, uh, in the mix in the Big 12 standings, which is where you want to be if you're TCU. I don't, yep. they're, they're not going to win the Big 12, but they're in the mix, Tate. And being in the mix at TCU is good. Being in the mix is very, very good. I like the mix. Uh, so shout out to TCU. It's a, it's a, the, they're flying under the radar. They're better than I think most people would realize. And um, Jamie Dixon feels like he's trying to Jim Harbaugh the situation. You know what I mean? Where he's like, I want to have a good team, good season, and then I will take interviews. I'm gonna go to the NBA. <laughs> I'm gonna start taking interviews. Let's you know see. what I mean? I got, I got to get this together, and then I'm gonna start taking interviews. What would Pitt do to have Jamie Dixon back? Oh my God. Pitt should hire Sean Miller. Pitt might hire Sean Miller. That, that would be a home run. I, I don't know everybody. how he's going to coach Arizona State and Pitt, but but there's two Millers. <laughs> uh, all I know is there's two Millers. Uh, shout out to shout out to TCU Mike Miles, uh, Charles O'Bannon Jr. By the way, for for people who didn't know, mm. played at USC. His his father is Charles O'Bannon Sr., who um, won a national title at UCLA. So there you go. Uh, what else is there? What else do we have to hit? Uh, that's a, that's all I really got in my shout outs. Uh, I, I wrote down Jaden Ivey does not make me angry. Um, yeah, I should, I said at the top of the show, so I don't um, shout him out anymore. Yeah. He comes off the bench now, by the way. Who? Jaden Ivey. In this game? Yeah. Against the Iowa? last two games. Oh, I the last two games, he's come off the bench with Travion Williams. Huh. Makes you think. Going Has on. Matt Painter lost the locker? Like, what the hell's going on here? I don't like it. <laughs> As a Purdue booster, I demand answers. Like, what the hell's going on? Like, you have two. <laughs> I don't have, you have two we'll talk about that Friday. Like, come come the pitch. That's unfair. It's ridiculous. It's kind of genius, though, because then they go up against your second unit. It should... What if teams that are playing Purdue start staggering their own starters? <laughs> they put two guys on there. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we're gonna match up with these guys. Uh, I want to shout out. I got I got a couple more here. Uh, Chuck Crab, the the PA announcer for Assembly Hall, the Indiana PA announcer, is retiring. He's abrupt, abruptly mm. decided he wanted to retire. He's he's been doing it for a thousand years, um, and he's a legend. And uh, he decided it's just time to hang it up. That's why we're everyone's on retirement watch, dude. It's yeah. anti work. That's what that's what the, the society we live in. People just look around and they're like, I don't want to work anymore. Yeah. And Chuck Crabb's a great example. Middle of the season, done. I'm done. He's uh, he's legendary for saying sophomore. He says it's sophomore. Sophomore. A sophomore. Mm -hmm. That's how he'd say it. Yeah, I like that. Um, when you do a story live. So shout out to him. What shout else? out to retirement, man. You deserve <laughs> it. I can't wait. Uh, ch -ch 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 uh, shout out to the Ohio State men's volleyball team. I went up to Santa Barbara and watched them play. Uh, Did they UCSB. win? We don't need to talk about that. Uh, we don't, I, the better team lost, and I know this because uh, there was a lot of chess tapping on Ohio State. A lot of oh, mistakes yeah. being made, and then guys, chess, that, that's a that's a move that I'm going to add to the arsenal of like, you know, it's a bad matchup or you just didn't make shots tonight or whatever. Yeah. If, if a team is tap, tapping their chest a lot and they're losing, they're probably actually the better team because they're like, that's my... I, that, I'm that, was, that was one of our rules that our coach <laughs> had uh, in high school that you can never say my bad or tap your chest because we all knew it was your bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> which, I, which I always thought was like a great, you know, throw it into the. And it's room. hard too because you do something like you know you make a turnover, or whatever. You want to like look at your hand, like the ball slipped, or you want to be yeah, like my yeah. bad, you want to yeah. do whatever. When you can't do that, you're just like you're like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you're like what an idiot. Uh, I think that's it. I don't. I don't think I have anything. Oh, uh, Puxatawney Phil predictions. Groundhog's Day tomorrow. Jim, what, mm. you got? what are you thinking? Call it. Uh, call it. Six more months of winter. You're calling six more months. Wow. Right? What do you think? I think he sees the shadow, which is six more months, right? I think so. I have no. Idea. Anybody know? <laughs> I don't care. I I just I the only thing I'd base it in is gamble does, on that. Does he see his shadow or not? I think he sees yeah. his shadow this year. 
Do, can you gamble on that? Yeah, of course. You can gamble on anything. <laughs> you always remember that. You can get kids at home. You can gamble on anything. Do you remember when the guy dropped him and then he died? What? Yeah, a couple of years ago. Shut up. Mm-hmm. Who did? That happened? I don't know. Somebody. That's the mayor. We should know his name. That guy should be. <laughs> what? Yeah, should be banned. And they didn't. Roy in... Williams. <laughs> they didn't end the tradition. You drop the. Not that Roy Williams. You drop yeah. the. The what is it a, a groundhog? It's uh, a groundhog. <laughs> you drop the ground. What is it? It's groundhog. <laughs> what is it? It's groundhog. Uh, <laughs> you kill the groundhog and they keep the tradition going. Yeah, uh, I don't think I don't know that. Drop by mayor later later dies. 2014. <laughs> Eight years ago, that stuck with Jim. De Blasio. My prediction is they drop him again. <laughs> That's my prediction. It was de Blasio. Why uh, were they holding him? Isn't it the whole point? Like, you just let him do it on his own time? And it was you, Staten you Island to... Chuck, not uh, Punk Satoni. <laughs> oh, okay. It was, you oh. know, so uh, j- that sounds like a guy. That sounds like one that would go down. They do the Lion King move, right? They, yeah, they yeah. Hold it out and, and yeah. I can't imagine and anyone and like, holding a groundhog yeah. other than, like, you know, Bill Murray in a movie. You know? <laughs> I was talking to someone the other day. They didn't know what the movie Groundhog Day was. 31 years old. Well, that's the problem with the world we live in. It really is. Mm-hmm. Did you say they, that? They to just them? simply had never heard of it or never seen it. Yeah, they said they'd they never, never heard of it, never seen it. I'm like Bill Murray. They're like, no. They're like who? Went to Tennessee. <laughs> oh, that checks out. <laughs> All right, uh, that's the show. We'll uh, see you guys on Friday. Thanks to everybody watching on uh, YouTube and uh, listening. Yeah, we were live. Yeah, we were live. Yeah.